This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Hey there folks, Dr. Dan here from Ag AM in Kansas and Doc Talk and you know I just, uh, the wildfires that occurred in southwest Kansas, the Oklahoma Panhandle and West Texas, they affected a lot of people in a lot of different ways. But the one thing that, that was the positive of this is to just see how selfless most people in our industry and in agriculture really are and, and people beyond agriculture. So many people wanting to give, people in churches, people in communities that want to provide help, they want to provide money, they want to provide hay, they want to provide fencing supplies. All of this has been overwhelming. And I was uh, traveled down to help support some of our friends and, and family in that Ashland area. And, and when you get there, you know, the, the first thing that you see is this the utter devastation and the vastness of the devastation. When they talk about 400, 700, 1,000 or a million acres that were lost to this, this wildfire and that it was traveling at 80 to 100 miles an hour uh, and covering such a vast amount of land, it's hard for one to wrap their head around seeing fences burnt to the ground, seeing electrical poles burnt, all the street signs, highway signs, things to that nature. But then you start to think about how good our emergency response was. My hat's off to the people of that surrounding area that, that in Kansas, you know, uh, none of the people in Ashland or in Clark County lost their lives. We had some people in West Texas that lost their lives. We had some people that were in the transportation industry and, and our hearts go out to their families for their losses. And then when you go out on the calls and you work with the, the producers, the big things that we we're dealing with as far as in this wildfire, obviously documenting the cattle losses from the fire, but then there are the cattle that survived that need to be euthanized. And, and really when we're uh, assessing those cattle, we're assessing their hooves because when they, it's just a lot of things that happen in a fire are things that can happen in the winter for frostbite and shortened ears or ears uh, denuded, uh, hoofs where you see the hooves actually slough off, uh, the loss of hair and, and then you know, we had uh, on bulls, we'd have some, some burnt scrotums and, and on cows, burnt udders. And when those cows burn their udders with baby calves, we wind up with orphaned calves. And so it was things that I never really thought about that happened during this. And, and luckily, when we start to talk about orphaned calves and, and gathering up the orphaned calves, some of the local 4-H and FFA chapters uh, in those counties were taking in orphaned calves and bottle feeding them. We had calf ranches in the area, dairies that were taking in these orphan calves and, and providing a home and providing milk replacer for them. Um, and then assessing the cows and the calves and the bulls. You know, what has died? What needs to be humanely euthanized? And then what are the ones that we can apply treatments to? And, and what are the secondary effects of the fire that we need to be watching for? So that was really a lot of what we were doing in the first 48, 72, 96 hours. Once we had the animal and people triage, uh, done. Then we started focusing on, okay, all of our grass supply is, is burnt, so now we need hay. And people sent hay from everywhere. And one of the things that, that you don't think about is a lot of times we go out and say, well, we'll send that hay that we didn't use last year. And if you send hay that you wouldn't feed to your cows, a lot of these people wouldn't feed to theirs and the cows won't eat it. So it winds up just being transported it for, for nothing. So getting medium to high quality hay into that region was was needed and it might still continue to be needed if we don't get proper rainfall and proper regrowth or we're going to see herds being dispersed out of that area into confinement operations or into other pastures in other parts of the country so if you have pen space or pasture space or things to that nature please contact the kansas livestock association so they might be able to match you with a uh, producer the other thing that we lost a lot of were homes and fences and sheds and chutes and facilities. And we don't think about that, but we can't doctor or pro provide treatments if we lost our facilities. And so rebuilding the facilities, portable corrals, different things to that nature. And I know that everybody wants to load up fencing materials and, and send that into that region. But one of the things that, that, that you have to understand is that not everything is done the same way from, from region to region, let alone farm to farm and people build fences to last 30, 40, 50 years. And, and so when we start to, when I talked to Kendall Kay of the Stock Grower State Bank, one of the things that was obvious is sending money might be better than sending supplies. While we like to send supplies, 
Um, if we could do some, some larger bargaining where we buy the supplies that are used in that region and that it's easier to divide money among producers that need it so they can go buy the supplies that they want than it is to divide up the supplies that have been brought in. So, so that's some of the things that, that we've learned. Long term, understanding the indemnity programs, understanding that USDA has an indemnity loss program for cattle. We also have some loss programs for fences. We have hundreds of thousands of miles of fences that need to be replaced because the posts were burnt off. We have uh, already got a lot of the electricity. The, the linemen and the power companies, unbelievable. Even within 24 hours, we're restoring electricity to different areas and, and getting uh, highway marker signs out so that we can understand where we're at and where we're going. A lot of volunteers from a, from a different region that don't know the region that need highway marker signs to, to get to fires. Uh, the National Guard coming out with helicopters, but it was a, it was a true sense of our commodity leadership, our, our political leadership, our, our, our community leaders, but most importantly seeing the ranchers and farmers of these communities draw together, taking care of each other, taking care of the animals, and starting to rebuild. You can help us. There's two or three different relief foundations that you can go to. Well, you can go to the Ashland Community Foundation or you can go to the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and make monetary gifts. Another way, you can buy this beautiful print that was painted by Dr. Eva Gardner of the Gardner Angus Ranch of Ashland and Clark County area before the fire. This painting will be sold through the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and all proceeds will be provided to victims of the wildfire. It's time, the Great Bend Farm and Ranch Expo, April 5th through the 7th in Great Bend, Kansas. This is your regional expo held in the heart of Kansas. J.D. Wing Horse Clinician, all three days, sponsored by T-Cross Ranch and Bobby Norris Realty. Bradford Cattle Dogs, Border Collie Demos, all three days. Live Cattle, Beer Garden, 80 Acres and Three Buildings of Exhibits. Corporate Sponsors, American Hat Company, The Great Bend Co-op. Go to StarExpos.net for more information, April 567.